warm welcome to the Health Care Science Innovations 2019. My name is Nadia Tsao. I am a senior technology analyst at IU CapEx and I work in the life sciences team. I'm one of the organizers of the conference and your host for this month. So some of you may already be familiar with IU CapEx. We are a UK-based market intelligence and events company. <coughs> Our focus is on emerging technology. So we're active in subjects of 3D printing, electric vehicles, life sciences, photonics, RFID, sensors, and wearables. You may find our research um, through off-the-shelf market research reports. We've authored over 100 or so of these. Um, we also offer a subscription service. So this is to our online business intelligence portal. And um, obviously, uh, through our expertise, we're able to conduct this work research. Well, um, the company runs a number of global events. You're here at one today. But our main shows are the ID Tech Show. These are held uh, twice a year, once in the spring in Berlin and once in the fall in Santa Clara. So our next big event is in Santa Clara this November. Online, we run a number of web journals on our research topics and our analysts are always conducting webinars on um, our areas of IU Tech X was founded in 1999. This year is actually our 20th anniversary. But over the time, we've been serving clients in over 80 countries uh, from our bases around the world. So you're here today at Healthcare Sensor Innovations 2019. This is the first time uh, that we've held this event. But we've been running these topics through the IU Tech X show for the past few years. Um, and uh, we've obviously seen great interest from you guys uh, in the area. So what really struck out to us um, when thinking about organizing an event in healthcare uh, were the themes of healthcare diagnostics and continuous monitoring, and uh, I'll get into this a little bit later. So we got off to a great start yesterday with master classes on wearables led by a principal analyst, uh, James Hayward, in fact, there, um, as well as a session on biosensors led by a technology analyst, uh, who may be around uh, in just a few minutes. So uh, today and tomorrow are the main days of the conference. Today we are focusing more on wearables. Um, so starting off uh, after our keynotes with a session on wearable, wearables in healthcare, where you look at different form factors. In the afternoon, we'll take a deeper dive into the application of wearables to remote patient monitoring, and finish off today looking at a very exciting form factor, um, such as electronic skin factors. Tomorrow the focus is more on data and sensors. After um, three keynotes in the morning, we will uh, hear from the speakers on different types of sensors that they develop for uh, diagnosing uh, and care. In the afternoon, we'll take a deep dive into areas of biosensors, so sensors looking at um, biological molecules. And uh, finishing us off will be gas sensors. Um, very exciting on um, basic means of uh, so on Friday, we have two more master classes. Um, James will be leading one on electronic skin patches, and uh, we'll have our CEO, Ricky Das, here uh, to teach us all about sensors, printed, um, and stretchable. Um, so if you're interested in these master classes on Friday, they're still open for registration. Uh, do speak to Kath, who is uh, behind the registration desk, if you're interested. And that leads me on to the next slide. This is the conference team that's here today. Obviously, there's more of us from ID Tech X here, but these are the main people um, that uh, you should look out for uh, during the conference. So Kath is the organizer of the event. Um, she'll be behind the registration desk, and she's actually there in the back there as well. Um, so please do uh, find her if you have any logistical or technical issues. We have Thomas Sullivan uh, from the US. He's our sales executive uh, on the exhibition side. So if you're interested in exhibiting at future events, please do uh, reach out to him. We have Claire Newell from our uh, research sales side, and she'll be happy to talk to you about our reports, our subscription, and of course, consultancy opportunities. And finally, there's myself, my name's Nadia. Uh, I'm here to help you with anything else that you might come uh, across. There are a number of us here from the life sciences team. Um, these are all analysts from my tech X. So there's myself, my colleague, Dr. Ivan DeBacker. Uh, we work on healthcare and life sciences team. Um, my colleague, uh, Dr. Michael Dent, will also be here over the next two days. He works in ag tech and food tech, so um, if 
that is your interest, please do reach out. Um, we already mentioned James, he's there in the back, you can see him around. He has been working on wearables for the past five years, so he's the expert uh, on everything that we're talking about today, really. Um, finally, uh, you might find uh, Dr. Jang around uh, these two days as well. She's the analyst for biosensors and gas sensors, and um, on the other side, she also works in IoT and 5G, so um, please do reach out to her if that's Bit more housekeeping. Um, we're here in the Gillespie Center in Clare College, and uh, we're also here in the Rhino Auditorium in the basement. All the conference talks over the next two days will all be here. Um, you would have come through uh, the garden room earlier today. This is on the ground floor. We had registration there. Lunch will also be served there uh, today and tomorrow, and that is the meeting point for the Gala Dinner later tonight. A uh, number of you would have pre-registered for this event, so please do meet us in the garden room and we'll walk over to the other side of the road to Clare College together. If you have any dietary requirements, uh, please find Kath at um, <coughs> either the garden room or at the drinks reception for your little place cards. They'll just let the wait staff know um, your dietary requirements. Uh, and finally, the Elton Garden Room on the first floor. This is where all our tabletop exhibitors are going to be. There's 12 in all. Um, refreshments will also be served there, so tea, coffee, cakes, and cookies, I've been told, um, will be upstairs once in the morning for a longer break, and then once in the afternoon. Uh, dessert will also be served up there. Very important. Um, so halfway through lunch, please do make yourself um, make your way up to the Elton Garden Room for dessert and So this is a really exciting time to be working in healthcare, med tech. Um, healthcare industry is really struggling with um, changing demographics around the world and increase costs and demand on the healthcare system. So in terms of um, what they're facing, we have an aging population starting with the aging of the baby boomer um, uh, group. So uh, it's forecast that the uh, number of elderly aged 60 and above will be growing by 56% to 1.4 billion uh, in the year 2030. Uh, this is significant because though they're uh, growing, aging, and um, living longer, uh, it's not necessarily that we're healthy. So um, there's a high prevalence of chronic diseases in this group. Uh, and this means that they require long-term care at a very, uh, very demanding care as well. So 90% of the U.S. healthcare spending is actually on people with chronic diseases, and in other countries, this is above 75%. Um, globally, we have a growing population, 8.5 billion of us forecast for 2030, and uh, this is not equal growth. So we have a rising middle class forecast to be 65% of the global population by the year 2030. And what that means is that um, they're living sedentary lifestyles, um, urbanized living, and all that drives up the prevalence of chronic diseases and further burdening the healthcare system. Um, moreover, because they have more disposable income, they're now also demanding higher levels of care from the healthcare system. And so that kind of brings us to point of care and continuous monitoring. Uh, healthcare industry has been trying to decentralize for the past few years. And what this really means is that um, we start off with a test that may be conducted once a year uh, in a centralized lab, for example, that we're moving closer and closer to where the patient is. So a test like this may be done once a year. It doesn't really tell you much. But as we move closer, uh, maybe to a community setting, we can run this every few months into the home maybe a few times a day, and then when we really get down into the wearable and functional space, we can check up on the patient um, even multiple times a minute. Uh, and so as you can kind of guess from that, as we get closer to the point of care, um, we get more and more towards continuous monitoring. <coughs> it's really important to get a better, uh, with more data comes more understanding of how the diseases progress, how patients are doing, and to better manage uh, this condition. 
And so this all really ties into the uh, topic of remote patient monitoring. <coughs> remote patient monitoring is essentially um, the ability to diagnose or monitor really a person from uh, a different site. This can be in the hospital or uh, at home. And really the key market for remote patient monitoring will be home monitoring of patients with chronic diseases. There are many benefits of doing so. Um, you can reduce hospitalization and utilization <coughs> of emergency rooms. This, uh, these are both very costly. Uh, so by doing so, uh, better management of person prevents them from entering into the hospital, we can now reduce costs. And because of this, uh, the quality of life is also improved. And um, therefore, they have a peace of mind. Uh, and the caregivers also benefit from this. Uh, they also have a peace of mind. Uh, and finally, this is really efficient for healthcare providers, as we're seeing. Um, they get to see more people uh, in time, more difficult cases as well. And so, <coughs> the key areas uh, here on the other side of the slide uh, cardiovascular disease, number one killer around the world. Diabetes, very significant burden on the healthcare system around the world, 37 billion just in the US alone. Uh, finally, respiratory um, chronic, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is actually the number three leading cause of people's life. So, all very exciting themes uh, that we'll see over the next two days. Um, for now, I'm going to introduce our first two speakers in our keynote session. Uh, so first of all, we'll hear from Dr. Garcia <coughs> Canseo uh, from GSK. He is the director there in digital biomarkers. And he's going to teach us all about what we're doing at GSK to develop new data, um, source of data, into their drug development process. And then following that, uh, we'll hear from Mr. Brad Larnan from Austin Scientific, uh, where he is a principal R&D engineer. And he will tell us all about cardiac and neuromodulation. So uh, please join me in a round of applause to welcome uh, Dr. Vincero. 